Greetings, everyone. I'm JP Park, one of the people who participated in the collaborative efforts of organizing this conference. On behalf of all the colleagues who have worked for successful preparation and realization of this event, I'm pleased to welcome all of you to this momentous occasion to reflect upon and celebrate Professor Martin J. Powers' upcoming retirement from teaching and administrative service. So there will be a formal introduction of his scholarship and accomplishment in later part of this conference, thus I would not go into details of them today. However, we all know the reason why so many people are here today, and also why dozens of colleagues, friends, family members, and former students willingly travel long distance and hours to be in Ann Arbor for this event. As a proud graduate of University of Michigan myself, who had the honor and privilege of working with Professor Powers for my own graduate degree, I consider this event as a celebratory yet setting moment. I wish him a joyful and carefree retirement wherein he can lead his life without burden of uh, mentoring students or the other school-related obliga uh, school obligations. However, personally, it is quite disheartening to see my teacher leaving my alma mater. It is also a great loss for the field of art history, intellectual history, and sinology. So uh, I may ask him, where is Mari? Oh. <laughs> ask him a question that may contradict the very nature of this conference. If you ever, or if you have ever actually second uh, thought or doubt about your retirement, <laughs> maybe you can tell me by the end of you know, conference tomorrow. <laughs> That means we can have another, and we will have another and real conference, really celebrating your retirement, say 2028 or 29. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so this conference was uh, made possible mostly thanks to the extremely generous support from Kenneth Liverthal and Richard Rogo, Center for Chinese Studies. However, I'm very well aware that it was not the merit of my letter that secured a grant from the center, but it was thanks to the highest respect Professor Powers has garnered among his colleagues for the past four decades. In this regard, I believe this conference simply turned out to be another gift presented to us by Professor Martin J. Powers. I'm also very grateful to the Department of History of Art and the University of Michigan Museum of Art for their cordial cooperation. In addition, Carol Stepanchuk at the Center for Chinese Studies provided meticulous logistical and administrative preparation for this conference. Professor Powers, close and local friends in Ann Arbor, Ying Chen and Liu Ju Zhou also offered thoughtful and considerable donation for the successful hosting of this event. I'm confident that there will be a series of interesting presentations and intellectually stimulating discussions for the next couple of days. I hope all of you in this room enjoy the every moment of the event and cherish our memories for many more years to come. Again, thank you and welcome. So now I will uh, hand over the podium to Professor Mary Gallagher, the Director of Center for Chinese Studies. Thank you. Thanks, JP. Uh, thanks for the invitation to speak at this conference. Um, as director of the Lieberthal Rogel Center for Chinese Studies, we're really pleased to be able to host this conference and honor uh, Marty's legacy and contributions to the fields of Chinese studies, uh, history of art, and the study of art and politics globally in China and elsewhere. I recently uh, went through our blog interview. We have a, a LRCCS blog with Eric Couliard's interview with Marty a few months ago. And I found out a few things about him that I didn't know before. Uh, I found out that Marty is a first-generation college student right, and from a working-class background in Chicago, and that he attended Shimer, is that how you pronounce it, college in Chicago, which um, had a, and I think still has, a great books curriculum and a Socratic method of teaching. Uh, I highly recommend reading the Wikipedia page of Shimer College because it's quite interesting. And I, according to uh, that page, uh, it nearly folded in the late 1960s, exactly when Marty was a student. And according to this account, the closure happened because of the grotesque internecine struggle described as, quote, disputes over curriculum changes and the extent to which student behavior should be regulated. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So given Marty's role as a provocative advocate for a more balanced view of human rights and individual expression in China historically, what I really want to know is, what was Marty's role in their grotesque <laughs> internecine struggle? And was this the beginning of his academic career as someone who breaks down barriers between the West and China, between in the individual and the collective, between rights and authority? And so I'm hoping at this conference there is a discussion of the grotesque internecine struggle. I'd also, not that I want the conference to be a grotesque internecine <laughs> struggle. I'd also like to thank JP for his heroic efforts in organizing the conference from California, and also for Carol for doing all the work on campus to plan the event, particularly the dinners, and this is a little bit of an inside joke, which by the way have nothing to do with Marty's retirement, and everything to do with his long distinguished career and his contributions to the University of Michigan and especially the China Center. So thank you very much. <laughs>